So look, let's look at strategy two. Strategy one was soil building, and we looked at the specifics of soil building. Now let's look at habitat building, increasing below and above ground habitat. Six farms use some of the 14 habitat building tools and strategies on the list you have. Let me repeat that. Six U farms use some, or in some case all, of the 14 habitat building tools and strategies. Let's look at them. I guess I'm kind of making a comment here before we look at that. Diversity is not created equally. It's important to provide the right diversity. Uh, this is Landis et al. 2000, and they are entomologists. So they are even more avid than I am about understanding the de details of which kind of diversification encourages which beneficial insects the most. Okay, so designing on farm diversity depends on each farm scale, farm and landscape ecology, economics, and goals. So uh, here's the Colorado farm. Here's one of the Eastern Oregon farms. Let's look at those more closely. Oh, I'm still doing more ecologists. Caution against, I love this term though, uh, Ger Ratten and, and my hero Miguel Altieri say, don't choose a chocolate box ecology strategy. It is the quality, not the quantity of diversity that is important. In, in ecology, that the resilience and the ability to self-regulate of an ecosystem is highly related to the network of beneficial interrelationships between the elements. So it's almost more important that the, the, the network of interrelationships is actually more important than any individual element. So we, the, if you're asking, well, how do I know which, which ones are the right things to select, what you're doing is you're selecting things that hit all, as Helen said many times, hitting all the ecological functions so that you have elements in each ecological function and then th therefore that will help you create that network of beneficial interrelationships. Exactly. So here is that bro the broccoli fields I told you about where we doubled the diversity, right? We doubled the diversity. We went from monoculture of broccoli to 50% of that field in clo clover and weeds, but clover and weed. We haven't really increased the quality much, even though we've gone up 50%. Do you see what I'm saying? OK. You guys know this. So let's look at the crop diversity on all six farms. Here is the one farm in eastern Oregon. Here is the other farm in eastern Oregon. Here is the big farm in California in the Salinas Valley. And there's crop diversity. Is that a monoculture of lettuce? No, look at all the colors as opposed to the diversity in my forest garden in, on Woodley Farm. So different kinds of crop diversity. Let's look at them more specific. So there were blooming summer and winter crops on all six of the farms. These were good organic farms. They were utilizing cover crops, even though some farms feel, many organic farms even, feel that there's an economic risk to having cover crops every year. There's an opportunity cost. We would disagree, but these were all really good farms. They were doing different kinds of cover crops, which was cool for me because it allowed me to see buckwheat next to red clover, next to Sudan grass, next to winter wheat, and then, of course, our clover in between our trellised cucumbers at the edge of the, the peach rows at Woodley Farm. So the crop strategy depends on the percent of total farm and cover crop each year. So cover crop's good, but what's the percent of total cover crop each year, and how is the cover crop managed, meaning disturbed? So three farms mow the cover crops before full bloom because their priority, their management priority, 
their ecological function priority is to grow as much of their own fertility as possible. So by golly, that's kind of a good goal, right? If everybody, if all farms in the world did that, we would be a better planet, would we not? Yes. yes. So that's a good goal. So they want nutrient density and nitrogen mainly. But what do they get if that if they do that? They don't get season-long sequential bloom for beneficial insects, or not as much. They're missing that multitasking of that living mulch, or excuse me, that cover crop. So, but, but the other three farms allowed the cover crops to bloom. Now, this won't surprise you that two of those three farms were Woodleaf and Biodesign. <laughs> 